gang, welcome back to my channel. As you can read by the title, Millennial Reacts to NWA. So before we even get into this, we gonna explain what a millennial is. So y'all don't be thinking I'm younger than how I be looking sometimes. I'm born in 96, which makes me a millennial. By Wikipedia standards, a millennial, also known as Generation Y, as in why the hell are we here? You don't know. But us millennials are people, it says, the demographics are people that are born in the early 80s as starting birth years in the mid 90s to early 2000s as ending birth years. So basically people t through the 1980s to like, I'm not gonna say 2000, but we're gonna go with like 98, 99 are the cutoff points. So 80s to like 98, 99, are, we're all millennials. So if you're not born in the 70s, 60s, or the 2000s, you are not a millennial. But if you are in the 80s and 90s, we are all millennials. Just so you guys know can clarify and be like, these millennials, you're a millennial too. Thank you, look it up on Wikipedia if you do not believe me. But I'm gonna be reacting to NWA F the Police. Of course, I've already had it. <laughs> I had it. Of course, I've already seen this. Hello. <laughs> of course, I've already seen it. But I'm gonna be reacting to it for you guys just so this can correlate to the police nowadays and why in the early 90s did a group make a song called F the Police and why is it still relatable to this day where we get on though of course don't forget to hit that big red button like my shirt hit the subscribe button to be part of the gang you know we the littest gang on YouTube 3.5k strong guys come on let's hit 10k before the summer ends also don't forget to drop a like on this video if you like NWA or if you like me doing throwback videos like NWA, Tupac, Ice Cube, uh, all, people like that. Y'all go ahead and give this video a like and drop it down below in the comments what else you guys like to see from me. And do you like this video? Like what did you think about it? Let me know down in the comments below. Also don't forget to turn on your post notifications you know every time that I upload or go live on a tube because I do on a regular basis. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. So we're gonna sit here and go dissect these lyrics and we're gonna see how this correlates to 2018. All right, we all found the lyrics. Let's go into dissecting them. I know y'all look at me like, where are your lashes, fam? But I didn't put on lashes today, fam. All right, let's go with the first first. The first verse is Ice Cube, F the police, coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it back cause I'm brown and not the other color. So police think they have the authority to kill a minority. I mean, I think that still is a thing. They still, racial profiling is still done to this day. Like, it's, it, that's, that's 100% still a thing. Racial profiling and discrimination reached a fever pitch in the late 80s after the emer emergence of crack in 1986 by your president. I don't know, Reagan, I think, brought crack to the hood <laughs> and then started arresting people for it, of course. By Straight Out of Compton's release in 1988, there were 762,718 yearly arrests for drug possession. That number, let me, 762,718. That's almost a million arrests. Almost a million. Nearly twice as many as the 400,000 in 1981. Dude, it's only almost a million people were arrested for drug possession. That's ridiculous. The discrimination also manifested itself in 1986 Anti-Drug Abuse Act, which made arrests for crack cocaine possession 100 times worse than an arrest for powder cocaine. Despite the two drugs being nearly identical on a molecular level, the only difference between the crack and powder forms of cocaine is the removal of hydrochloride. We're not gonna get into all that. But that's ridiculous, almost a million arrests made in a year for just drug possession. He said, F that ish, cause I ain't the one from a punk mother effer with a badge and a gun to be beaten on and thrown in jail. We can go toe to toe in the middle of a cell. Meaning, what's up fam? What's goody? F it with me cause I'm a teenager with a little bit of gold and a pager. Searching my car looking for the product, thinking every nigga is selling narcotics. Mm. 
basically racial profiling again, seeing that any like African Americans, blacks can't have money or wealth or anything or can't have anything expensive. It has to be, oh, if they have anything expensive, this is me speaking for back then, that they have to be selling drugs. It's the only reason they can have money is to sell drugs. Not like they can just work or have a degree. God forbid that they go to college. Heaven forbid. Who would think that they would ever go to college? Get a degree and work like any other normal human being or just work like any other normal human being. Of course they have to sell drugs. <laughs> of course. So it says O'Shea Jackson, who's known as Ice Cube, he was born in June of 1969. So when the song was written, well, he was about 18 or 19, which is why he said, because I'm a teenager. He was like 18 or 19 at the time, writing the song. So it says, Compton had repressive anti-gang laws in the 1980s and 90s, which regarded any group of three or more people with a common identity as a gang. Meaning, <laughs> if it's you and two other friends walking down the street, maybe added to the mall, going to the corner store, y'all are a gang. Y'all could be dressed in school clothes. You guys are a gang. Allowing police to treat groups of kids hanging out after dark as criminal organizations, the police undertook gang sweeps to harass and arrest such kids, leading to the sort of anti-police animosity that spawned this song. Um, that extent is just too ridiculous for me. Like, that is so extra. Three or more people are considered a gang says you rather see me in the pit than me and Lorenzo rolling up in a benzo. So Lorenzo Gerald Patterson is MC Ren's real name. Duh. Cuba saying that police would rather see them in prison, in the penitentiary, than driving in an expensive car. Again, blacks can't have anything good, which I just don't understand why. It says this epic line inspired later generations of rappers to voice a similar sentiment and show the lasting culture significance of NWA's then unprecedented violent critique of the police and our political system. Beat a police out of shape and when I'm finished, bring the yellow tape. So basically he's saying, beat a police like they're supposed to be in shape. Beat Duh, if he got, boy, I'm you I'm if he got, And then he said, bring the yellow tape because that man might be dead. Like we don't even know fam. Like, the tape off the scene of the slaughter still getting swole off bread and water. Okay, it says in the tin timberous description of the consequences of his cop killing behavior, Ice Cube refers to the ordinary yellow tape used to in basically to tell you that a crime scene is has happened at this in this area perimeter. It's these kind of lines that trigger the phenomenon of selective hearing on the media where they ignore the message of the song and just highlight the violent and explicit lyrics. Of course, they still do that nowadays. People do that all the time. They cut out what they don't want to hear and just focus on negative just like this is what I'm offended by I'm gonna just grab onto this and just be offended by it because that's how I want to feel today doesn't matter what else you're saying it doesn't matter if they're actually talking about the systematic beating up and arresting of blacks they heard oh he wants to kill a cop oh my god oh my god that's all they heard not that they shouldn't be saying, oh my God, they're killing and arresting a bunch of blacks basically for damn near nothing because of drugs and giving them life sentences and just ruining their whole lives because they're black. That should be your reaction to that. I don't know if they fags or what, such a nigga down and grabbing his nuts. Yeah, because usually if, when they arrest you, they like pat you down like everywhere, be touching all of your privates and stuff. So <laughs> he basically like y'all foo foo, y'all fruity or something because y'all be touching all up and burp parts, burp, but booty holding all that stuff and we ain't going like that. So it's basically police dehumanizing you, meaning they can touch you and do whatever you want. So this alludes to the police dehumanizing stop and frisk policies where the United States Supreme Court decided that the Fourth Amendment, which prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures, is not violated when a police officer stops a suspect on the street and frisk him or her without probable cause to arrest. So today, you could be walking down the street and if a police wants to frisk you and check you, they have the right to do so. All up in your privates and your booty holes, all of that. It says the Cornell U University Law School defines the law a brief, non-intrusive police stop of a suspect. The Fourth Amendment requires that the police have a reasonable suspicion that a crime has been, is being, or is about to be committed before stopping a suspect. If the police reasonably suspect the person is armed and dangerous, they may conduct a frisk, a quick pat down of the person's outer clothing. That being said, there have been several cases where the police have violated both the civil rights and human rights of men by color by grabbing onto the subject's genitals. However, there have been many cases that have ended in much harsher effects. The case, take the case of 16 year old Darren Manning, for instance, whose testicle was ruptured by a Philadelphia police officer during the first. They ruptured a child's 
nothing. I don't know if he was grabbing him too hard or moving him too. What the hell? What the hell did he do? Kick him in his nuts several times? Like he ruptured some a child's nuts. I'm flabbergasted. Like what? And on the other hand, without a gun, they can't get none. But don't let it be a black and a white one, cause they'll slam you down to the street top. Black police showing out for the white cop. If, if I don't feel like that's true, I don't know what the heck is. If that don't resonate with me, it made me feel some type of way, I don't know what to do, because I really do. That's why I really be thinking, I'll be like, if you're African American in the police force, how does it feel? Like, have you ever seen another black person literally get killed in front of you and you know they've done nothing, they don't have nothing on them and they're dead? Like, how does that make you feel, even being the armed forces? Because at the end of the day, they all see us as niggas. Even you. You're just a nigga in a police officer suit. Uniform, sorry. So, like, how did that make you feel? How can you sleep at night knowing that you're aiding this? Basically aiding, aiding and abetting them killing innocent African Americans. And you're basically being, like, silent about it. Because you wear that uniform. Because at the end of the day, blue lives matter. They matter just like black lives matter, but don't sit here and say blue lives matter as if police is who they are as a person. They are not police as a person. That is a job. That is an occupation that you chose. No one forced you to be a police officer. God didn't come to you in your sleep and say, you're going to be a police officer. You have no choice. No, that's not how it works, boo. That is an occupation just like a librarian, just like a teacher, just like a doctor. Choices. You choose your occupation. So don't sit here and try to tell me. Blue Lives Matter if they had no choice and this is who they are. They were born a police officer after their mom's vagina. That's a whole ass lie. You chose to be this. So, and how come their lives are more important than everyday people? You're people just like us. After they take off the uniforms, they're still a human being. That does not give you the right to kill and slaughter people. Nowhere in the Bible does it say if you're a police officer, except for if you're a police officer, you can kill people and it's okay. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, and at the end of the world, when we all have to stand before God and he confronts us about our sins, you're going to be questioned about the people that you've killed, if you have. You're going to have to answer for that. There's no police force to save you, there's no judge to save you, it's just you and God. So you're going to have to answer for your own sins. So people really need to think about that when they make these choices every day. You're going to have to answer for this. I know you might be able to go home and sleep at night knowing that you just killed an African American child or a man or just uh, harass somebody. You might sleep well and fine, but karma is a bitch and it always wins and it will come back to you. Just remember that. You can put that uniform on, but people cannot put on their skin. Is who they are. Okay, so it says, don't think that having a police officer be black means that he or she will treat minorities better. Ha <laughs> ha! Facts! Uncle Tom's, Coombs, and Chimimis. Q points out that these officers will still mistreat kids in order to show off to their bosses or simply because that's the nature of their job. Mmm. 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 Ice Cube will swarm on any and ever in a blue uniform just because I'm from the CPT. Punk police are afraid of me. Huh? A young nigga on the warpath and I'm finished, it's gonna be a bloodbath of cops down in LA. Yo, Dre, I got something to say. That was Ice Cube's version. Uh, I'm gonna do a part two of MC Ren's version in another video. Comment down below if you guys watch that. Give this video a thumbs up. My camera's gonna die, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurry this on up. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more of me because you know you want to, you know. 3.5K. The Friends Gang is lit. Let's get the 10K by the end of the summer. Don't forget to turn on your notifications every time I upload or go live on the tube because I do it on a regular basis. You know, give this video a thumbs up, like, comment, uh, and comment if you want that second part, MC Runs, to me to dissect that. And I will see you, my gang, in another video. Bye, gang.